Summers. He, that would be Mr. Mark Willery, 68 years old, licensed in 2002. He's got 1,300 hours. The airplane was built in Lock Haven in 1967 and cruises 110 miles an hour on 150 horsepower. Home built in Boise in, in 2003, he cruises 200 miles an hour on 180 horsepower. in a Waco built in 1940. That airplane was used to prepare pilots for flying in, in World War II. He's a pilot for 550 years. He said he wanted to fly his whole life and finally did so. I want you guys to uh, enjoy the day. Really enjoy learning about uh, flight, but also about science, technology, engineering, and math. We're really excited to have you guys all here today. Enjoy yourselves and have a fun time. The band is now going to uh, give us the fight song.
our bottle rockets that we have been working on in science for about two weeks um, and this is ours so when you're in eighth grade you will be doing this uh, yeah there are two different categories one is artistic and one is distance so we want ours to win both yeah What's your job? To put the rocket on and pull the lever and make it fly. Now what's your job? I pull the cord once the rocket's on. I don't think my job is to check the air pressure on the tanks so like when they shoot it, it goes far. This one landed right here. I think that that's like two. Only Joe Pryor would build a rocket like this. What's your prediction for your rocket outcome? I think mine, 100 yards. Um, it's gonna go real far. It's probably past Scotland, I believe, uh, if my calculations were correct. I've been doing the math, you know. What design principles did you use in building this rocket? I used the design principles of the monks of the round table and um, I feel like they really had the design down, you know, and they really could go heck of far, so I use their principles and their design. Let's see if it works. Yeah. Is it ready? Three, two, one! Reese apparently has gone for the minimalistic um, approach. Uh, what's your what's your prediction, Reese, on this? Um, from my calculations at home, it's gonna go about 80 yards. What is your guys' theory on what makes a bottle rocket go further? Um, Aerodynamics. It's uh, nose cone. It needs to have like a yeah. good slant on it. Because if it doesn't have nose cone, it'll just stop and go down. Yep. All right. What what special design elements do you guys have in your rocket? Uh, um, we have uh, smaller wings and then bigger wings. And For we don't know how it's gonna work. Yeah. I don't. We just decided to do that. Let's let's find out. All right. I'm sorry, Jen. I'm big. What design principles did you use on your rocket? The internet. How much water? I don't know. This went 80 meters. 80. Who's is it? Alondra's? <laughs> what? Hey, you might be the winner. Oh, yay! Wow. Right, see, so we're not, it's not, 
Yours. I got straight up duct tape, and I'm gonna make a top. My top just came off. No, I don't have a skip. I just need my top. One more day. Smokey is the bear and needs to go to space. Fly, Smokey, fly! In that swimming room, I need some scissors. You, you think that's a good design? Any? No. and harvests mostly nuts, pecans, almonds, walnuts, pistachios, and it comes up on the tree, comes around the trunk, and with a lot of friction, shakes it to make the nuts fall down. So who designed this machine is my husband, Bob. He is an agriculture engineer and for a company down in Live Oak, and believe it or not, Northern California is responsible for most of the nut harvesting in the nation. So it's pretty amazing. In the world? In the world? Yeah. In the world. Can you believe that?
This is the floating orb. We're making floating orbs. We're kind of just tying it. There we go. Oh. That's almost the first crazy orb for Easter. It's so amazing. 